today we have very important activities that is edible flowers and today we have with us mr rubin parik sir uh, he has a wide experience in this field so i welcome mr rubin parik sir on behalf of indian nursery men association i also welcome all the participants those who have joined across the uh, india so welcome you all and once again very happy new year to you all as we all of you know that uh, all the credit goes to uh, our president dr vp singh saab for this uh, 77th webinar this is going on so i welcome him on behalf of indian nursery association and once again and i request uh, shivangi madam what are the activities are going on under the dynamic leadership of mr vp singh saab uh, under his leadership so please present that uh, activities so over to you shivangi madam yeah thank you sir and good evening everyone i welcome you all for today's webinar in the meanwhile i'll share my screen so a lot of you may have attended our webinars more frequently than others and some may be new to the series so i'll quickly take you through the introduction and major activities of the association The Indian Nursery Men Association is the leading national association for the green industry in India, and it works to connect the industry across states and other segments. It is a registered non-governmental organization and a lifetime committee member of the Confederation of Indian Horticulture under the National Horticulture Board. We have completed thirty-four years since the establishment, with around four thousand lifetime members across several states of India. and it is only the and it is proudly the only non profit organization which is at the forefront of redefining collaborating and improvising the nursery business across india currently the organization is serving as a representative forum for raising the advancements achievements and concerns of the nursery industry on national as well as international platforms while planning the future of the indian nursery men association the newly formed governing board focused on several core principles like influential advocacy authoritative educators collaborative across the industry fervent supporters of plant plant businesses passionate promoters of healthy and green communities the association was founded by late shri arjun das agrawal in the year 1987 and the current president of the association is mr vp singh he is the ninth president he believes that when an association values differences and creates a welcoming environment it opens the door for innovation increased participation and elevated sense of community belonging for all we can see the reflections of his principles in the functioning of the association and the working of the governing council the association is a network of strength support and success it includes the horticulture industry including landscape and forest industry plant breeders greenhouses and nursery growers florists students and all other stakeholders our work is diverse and with the help of its current leadership we are trying to deliver best in the areas of pr and advocacy networking and partnerships capacity building and study tour publications and papers events and exhibitions research and development and fundraising it is also a motivation for us to see that people who are eminent personalities coming forward to join hands with the association to spread green awareness recently in september 2021 we organized the annual general meeting this was important in several ways but most importantly we grabbed a chance to recognize those who helped the association in contributing more towards the pm cares fund The meeting was also a seminar on the topic of problems of nurseries, garden centers in urban areas and their solutions. The association is versed in putting forth the issues of nursery sector and its people. So during the first wave of the pandemic, as we call it, it brought the government's focus towards the diverse issues faced by the people involved in the nursery businesses. To name a few. the financial loss due to the shutdown of the nurseries or the unavailability of labor post the lockdown and several other issues 
Well, in this regard, we also made an attempt with the help of our beloved members to accumulate more than a significant amount of donation for the PM Cares Fund. INA will always speak louder when it comes to the matter of nursery people's benefits. We truly feel that the actual results of implementing the proposed Nursery Act as currently will be tremendously disruptive to the nurseries and will lead to widespread distress, closures and job losses in the nursery agri-horticulture sector. Mr. Y.P. Singh, along with other leaders, is continuously working to bring more benefits to the nursery and horticulture industry. We have submitted several proposals before the National Horticulture Board requesting them to formulate financial schemes for the sector. Since the India market is recording exponential growth in the businesses of the floriculture and life plants, also the horticulture is perceived to have potential to raise the income, provide livelihood security and acquire foreign trade. The plant nursery sector has the potential to meet the flagship program of the Prime Minister to double the farmer's income if they are provided with proper and technical research-based support. Some of the demands on behalf of the nursery industry were to conduct a national level survey by the NHP for the identification of all fruits, vegetables, and ornamental plant nurseries and the allied landscape sector. Development of training centers for people from nursery, garden, and landscape sector. The development of research and development centers. Reallotment of subsidies to nurseries and polyhouses and to set up at least four international standard hubs in India. We have achieved several milestones in the past. Some of the most recent activities that can take us to new milestone would be the public-private partnership with the East Delhi Municipal Corporation to maintain the large public parks in Delhi. Apart from these in the past, the association has put forth the proposal to form a flowers and plant export forum of India as an autonomous body. This will also promote the horticulture export of plants and flowers from India. And to mention that INA will play a vital role in the framework of the policies and execution of the plants concerning it. It was for the first time under the current president and the governing council that we received membership applications from abroad. And it is beyond doubt that the association is growing stronger and bigger with increased members in countries like Japan, Vietnam, Lebanon, South Africa, Netherlands, Italy, Colombia, and many more. As a member, you can gain access to the biggest representative of the nursery sector in the country, which also brings along with it enhanced business opportunities. Like you can gain free access to our publications, including the horticulture directory and diverse support for your business. Other endeavors by Mr. Singh is the publication aspect and most importantly, its recent development. The monthly magazine Nursery Today is now registered under the Press and Registration of Books Act. The webinar series which started in May 2020 has proved to be immensely helpful for nursery people in sharing valuable knowledge. INA also organizes events and exhibitions to showcase the beauty of plants, nursery, landscape, floriculture, and its allied industry. Thank you, and over to you, Sachin, sir. Thank you very much, Shivangi, madam. Today we have a very, very interesting topic that is on edible flowers. And today we have with us Mr. Rubin Parikh, sir, from Gujarat to deliver his talk on edible flowers. In this 77th webinar, we got an opportunity to listen, to share the knowledge of from Mr. Rubin Parikh, sir. He has graduated in horticulture from Gujarat Agriculture University, has did his MS in food safety and quality management from University of Greenwich, UK. He started his career in 1999 with Wadiland Industries, where he worked as an assistant manager from procurement reporting to the general manager. Here he's shown the achievements in plant delivery of better quality and competitively draw materials to the company. After Wadiland Industries shifted to Superior Foods United Kingdom in 2004, he, has, he was having the opportunity of managing the QA system documentation part of the GMP and GHP teams. 
After that, he has carried out his career in Kerry Foods in UK, where he worked as a compliance technologist reporting to the QA manager and where responsibility was the <clears throat> handling and investigating customer complaints, foraging bodies, etc. Wherein uh, next uh, he has shifted to in China, Italy, and Bolivia, where he worked for the project management reporting to the managing director. Whereas he mostly in Tesco grew from in almost two years, where he has a hub technical manager. And he, in 2013, he, he is working as a consultant uh, in the food safety ethics consultant as a full time farmer from 2013. So today we have with us a very uh, eminent personality who is going to guide us on the edible flowers and it's uh, more what I will say the nice technology and we are very fortunate that today we have Rubin Parikh sir. Once again I welcome him on behalf of Indian Nurserymen Association and I request him to deliver his lecture on today's topic that is on edible flowers and after the completion of lectures we have the question and answer session. We have kept maximum time for the interactive session. So I request all the participants to be on the mute. After his completion of the session, we will have the interactive session. We have given a sufficient time for interactive session. This is for, because of the very interesting topic. And Mr. Rubin Parikh sir has a very wide depth of the subjects. So uh, undoubtedly we are very fortunate that today we have this Rubin Parikh sir. So, over to you, Rubin, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ramankar. And uh, it is actually my pleasure and a privilege to be presenting this topic. Uh, it's a topic uh, very close to my heart because uh, honestly, uh, there has been a lot of work on this done abroad, uh, not so much uh, in our own country. And if today uh, among uh, the nursery men, if I can kindle some interest in uh, this subject, I think I would have accomplished a little bit um, in this regard. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in all of you and, um, and a very good, uh, very happy new year. So let me start with my presentation that I've put, for, uh, put, uh, put together. And uh, when uh, we talk about edible flowers, uh, I wanted to, uh, focus on India. Uh, am I am I audible, uh, Shwani madam? Yeah, you're yes. yeah, you're audible. You're so, audible. Um, yeah. So uh, what I wanted to and is my screen being shared? Uh, can people look at the screen? Hi, you would just your screen has been shared, but you okay, do the fine, full fine. screen. Full so screen. I'll, I'll go. Screen. I'll go one by one. Um, so in India, the the situation is we have always been uh, using. Uh, so uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Uh, can you do the slideshow on? Okay. Uh, one second. Uh, that is from the beginning, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Uh, that is starting from the beginning. And this is a slideshow going on. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. So uh, we've always had a very long tradition of uh, eating flowers, like edible flowers. You know? And uh, see, what I've tried to focus is there are flowers which are used as mainstream food products like raw materials, uh, ingredients. And then there are flowers that have uh, are not really Indian flowers, uh, but they've come into cultivation, they're grown here, but they have uh, minor uses. They're not like mainstream, hardcore food ingredients. But let's see the, fa the, the, the famous ones, the ones that we've been using for a very long time. Uh, so banana blossoms, uh, we're going to look at banana blossoms, uh, mahua uh, that we call uh, mahura in Gujarati and uh, so many similar uh, names in a lot of Indian languages. Uh, roses, of course, moringa and the new super tree, super food, uh, food uh, with n number of benefits. Lotus, a variety of jasmine species, mainly mogra, pumpkin flowers and sesbinia uh, flowers. Uh, these are what I feel is India uses traditionally in uh, a very, uh, even commercially, it's available, uh, it's grown commercially, and it's a well-known food ingredient in many different parts of the country. So let's go to the banana blossom. Why banana blossom is a very promising flower crop used for food is because 
the banana blossom as people who have a background with uh, banana cultivation or are in our horticulturists would know that the blossom is to be removed when uh, a certain size of the bunch is reached the number of fingers uh, you know you need to remove the blossom so uh, in any banana field this is one of the important um, um, it, it's one of the very important uh, practices to remove the the blossom at the end of when the and the at the end of the bunch so uh, this blossom is actually you could say a waste product in many parts of india like in gujarat uh, there used to be a tradition in south gujarat to eat it um, there used to be a besan wala sabji a dry kind of a sabji a spicy besan wala sabji made out of the flowers clean flowers uh, but not anymore uh, south india uses it bengal uses it a lot of countries in south america central america southeast asia they all use this and um, it's something that you throw away but it can be sold so just imagine you have 4000 bananas and uh, you have 4000 bunches and you end up with 4000 blossoms well not all of them would be good enough to be sold uh, let's say you have 80% or 90% of ones that usually are good enough to be sold so uh, we're talking money you know from something that is going to be thrown away and uh, uh, there is it's it's being processed now people are processing that you getting canned uh, banana blossoms you get frozen banana blossoms you get dried banana blossoms uh, you have value added products out of banana blossoms you can dry it into powders but uh, let's look at something which is very exciting you know um, the vegan food market uh, people who don't want meat or animal products uh, that market is increasing every year exponentially there are a lot of people who chose to be vegan and uh, uh, they are always on the lookout for things that are like meat in texture like um, you know animal product like a meat a chicken uh, a meat fish so there's always that uh, somewhere uh, they have this need to find a food ingredient which can remind them of uh, ham uh, them having the pleasure of eating meat or fish or chicken so uh, this banana blossom you know what i found when i was going through it and i've, I've eaten banana blossoms a lot of times uh, when i was in south america so it's 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 trending as a best fish alternative now uh, you do know that you know the the way the, uh, the they eat fish is uh, in some places it's it's uh, fish and chips like you know fried fish and uh, then there is like these are battered uh, fish fillets and they are battered and then they are fried in a light batter and you can do the same with banana blossoms uh, and they would look like fish and if you treat them right they even taste a bit like fish say cod or something like that um, that is one way and it looks uh, very appetizing it looks very nice and it gives the vegans and vegetarians a substitute for eating fish and it's very healthy too if you go back and see there's a lot of minerals the vitamins uh, magnesium potassium there's a lot of stuff in it good stuff antioxidants polyphenols uh, you have that so it's not something that it's just for like you know it looks like fish there is a lot of nutrition in it as well so let's see the other uh, banana uh, recipes there's a lot of things from pakoras to curries to dry uh, thoran what you call south indians do it uh, sri lankans use it uh, the the southeast asians especially thailand cambodia vietnam they use a lot of it in salads um, you know the blossoms are uh, they, they kept raw crunchy and they're mixed with salads uh, banana blossoms papaya uh, flowers all of these they have a big uh, long tradition of using uh, uh, banana blossoms southeast asia uh, uh, that is about bananas now uh, see uh, not only the the cultivated varieties but the the, the real uh, if you ask me if across the uh, across south america across east asia across south asia i have seen banana blossoms and i evaluated them because of my personal interest in uh, banana blossoms and food processing uh, the plantains 
the, the cooking varieties, uh, they yield the best blossoms. And traditionally, those are the ones that have been into, uh, uh, you know, as used as food ingredients. So it's the, the plantains that have the best ones. That's according to what experience I have with this. Uh, but you don't get uh, plantains in a huge commercial lot. You know, it's usually uh, it's 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 a it's a, a home street kind of. Uh, the farmer has a few plantains, um, and uh, and that's it, it. You know, it's you don't have uh, somebody who has a twenty acre plantain, uh, at least not in India. Uh, you do have that in parts of Africa and. Uh, uh, Latin America, South America, but you don't have that in India. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but plantain cultivation is usually backyard and homes. Uh, but saying that, even your uh, Cavendishes and your other commercial varieties also have a blossom and uh, every bunch has it at the end and you have that as a, a very good uh, potential to be a food product to be sold across supermarkets. There are supermarkets in India who are selling it and uh, it's quite pricey. You'll be surprised at uh, the price if you check it out. Uh, 100 rupees, 150 rupees, up to 200 rupees for a blossom. And I would be very happy to get that because sometimes the bunch, the whole bunch isn't paying me that much. So if I get something like even 25 or 35 rupees a blossom, I would be very, very happy. Uh, let's all move to the other one, which is a very old and ancient uh, flower, uh, a tree, uh, Mahua, the Maduka Longifolia. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's been used in India since uh, prehistory. I don't think uh, um, there is uh, a, a tree species that, uh, you know, screams the, the heart, tribal heart of India as much as the Mahua does. So one of the most ancient wild growing source of many food, fuel, medicinal, and non-food products of India. So much work has been done on Mahua across universities, research stations, government forest departments, but somehow we've taken it for granted. You know, we, we, the, it is a tree that has been around forever and uh, uh, the, the, the importance of that tree in tribal communities cannot be understated. Um, it's just huge. You know, you have this belt of uh, the tribal belt in Jharkhand, in Madhya Pradesh, parts of Andhra, some of the big Naxal areas. <laughs> Sorry, <coughs> the Dang district, a uh, heavily forested district in Gujarat, parts of Maharashtra. So that belt, you know, where, uh, you know, they have the tribes like the, the Gons, the Baigas, the Beels, uh, these are tribes, they have an ancient tradition with Mahua. It's almost spiritual level. It's, it's deep down in the, in the DNA of the tribes of India. So uh, what excites me about Mahura is uh, that the flowers, you know, they are rich in sugar, sugar uh, sucrose, glucose, fructose, uh, and, and, and a lot of things, you know, you, you can have this slide later on, you will have this presentation and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the sugars, when the, fru the flower dries, become concentrated and uh, concentrated to the extent that it is 30-40% sugars, you know, that is a lot of sugar, that is like, uh, you know, um, having uh, a crop that you can make sugar out of or molasses out of. Um, and it's, it has a huge uh, amount of different products that are already being made. And there's an exciting variety of products that can be made. And there are people who have taken the leap to do those kind of things. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you a bit about it. Um, now, this is a chart which has come from uh, a Food and Nutrition Journal uh, article. And it has a beautiful, detailed, um, you know, a list of things what uh, Mahura flowers are used for, Mahura flowers are used for. Food and medicinal, let's forget about medicinals, not my topic. I have no experience in that. Uh, yes, food. Uh, so we have the traditional and the value addition. And if you can see the traditional, the fermented is, of course, the Mahura, uh, Mahura liquor and uh, the different styles of brewing. 
and sorry, fermenting and brewing. Uh, so we have these, we'll look at that too, and the non-fermenting. That is how the tribals have traditionally used the mawa flowers um, since prehistory, as a sweetener, as a cake, substitute for staple grains, when there has been uh, cases of famines and droughts. Uh, the mawa has always stood by people and has um, been uh, providing them with something uh, which can sustain them through lean times. A cattle feed, yes, uh, so that too. And uh, then there is value-added uh, products of Mahua, like uh, you have this Mahua wines, brandies, lactic acid, citric acid. Uh, there have been stations in India who are working on this, who have worked on this. If you want uh, to make Mahua wine, there is a ready-made protocol available. Uh, you can make brandy, you can make Burma. Uh, all these protocols are available, you can make it. There are standardized, methods and there are people who will come and teach you this they will set up a plant for you so all this is there it's already done done and dusted as they say and uh, non-fermenting we have purees and sauces juice concentration mahua jams jellies marmalades candied flowers gaze flowers mahua bar candy toffees cakes squash laddus rts and what have you there's a lot of things that have been worked on as MSc uh, research projects, as PhD topics for students, as um, there are uh, the tribal organizations, along with the government have research stations which have supported uh, activities to make stuff out of Mahua, food stuff out of Mahua. So all these is possible. Uh, then what really excites me about Mahua and because I am in uh, a format in a platform with nursery methods, um, uh, Mahua as a tree exists. But today, if I would say I want to have a plantation of uh, good quality Mahua clothes, um, I'm not sure where to find them. And uh, I, I can tell you that as, an, as a possible biodiesel crop, it holds a lot of uh, exciting opportunities. So, uh, Indian nurserymen, uh, whoever are there in this uh, webinar, please, uh, there is a lot of potential for Mawa. Uh, good quality, if you identify good quality trees uh, and you use those uh, science uh, to graph, and it's support AC basically. So you have the, the Ryan, um, uh, the Sapota, they're all uh, relative species. So who knows, uh, not much work has been done on that and identifying high yielding uh, clones. And you know, then even uh, there's, there's been a bit of uh, in vitro studies done. There are protocols, standardized protocols available for tissue culture Mawa. So uh, let's, we'll go to Mawa back again because that is something really can be taken from, you know, a, a tribal, uh, a forest based product into an industrial activity. It's just waiting to be done. Uh, the right kind of people maybe haven't yet taken this up. Uh, the right kind of approach hasn't been yet, uh, you know, um, uh, taken up with Mawa has not been handled correctly, I feel. A very big missed potential and it's still there. Somebody needs to pick it up. Uh, I hope somebody from you, uh, somebody among you who do that. Uh, now, let's talk about roads. Um, very well known uh, as an ingredient, very common, uh, both rose and the rose hips. Now, uh, you know, you, we used to call, the botanists used to call this as false fruit and pseudo fruit and pseudo carp. Um, those terms are no longer much in fashion. But uh, the, the rose petals, the, the deshi gulab, what we call the scented roses that we used to make the gulkans. And... Um, uh, there's a lot of species of that. You know better that topic than me as nurserymen. So these are the roses that are usually used. Um, you can use the petals for all this that I have been showing you. Then the hips are used as a very rich source of vitamin C, and um, it is it's it's it's, it's a very uh, very uh, popular traditional product in many countries in Europe, uh, particularly uh, the southern European countries. Uh, they have a long history of using uh, rose hips, uh, the climate, uh, the dry, cool climates, 
and uh, they have excellent scented roses. So they do that. The Middle East has a low, old, old tradition of uh, using roses as food. Uh, Iranians, um, the Lebanese, uh, all that. They, they have rose jams, rose syrups, uh, like we do. Ours is the traditional gulkan. Uh, and uh, we have been using roses as one of the ingredients to garnish uh, so many of our sweet meats, uh, our desserts since time immemorial. So uh, uh, we have roses. Uh, after that, let's see uh, the moringa. Uh, moringa, you know, it uh, burst across as a super fruit, uh, super food uh, some time ago. It is. And uh, we Indians have always been using it. We have always known about its uh, superior, um, you know, the things that it has, the, the advantages it gives. Uh, the kind of benefits one can have from eating Moringa, the different parts of the Moringa tree. Uh, everything, everything is useful. The flowers, yes. As a farmer myself, I grow Moringa and I grow them from the drumsticks, for the drumsticks. Uh, and yes, I have uh, recently had inquiries about uh, me giving uh, the people uh, leaves for drying and they make powder out of it. Uh, the flowers, uh, you can see them. There are a lot of products that are uh, done uh, in different parts of India from Moringa flowers. So uh, there are pakoras, there's raita, there's mixed in dals. And if you just have some time, you go on YouTube and you put Moringa recipes, Moringa flower recipes, you'll be just, uh, you know, you'll, you'll go crazy with the kind of stuff there is. There are people doing it. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's something that, again, it's uh, if you live in a city or you live in a town uh, and you, are, you can get Moringa flowers, please do try out some of these recipes. I have, and I find it really, really good. Um, so there's a lot of it. Moringa flowers are there. And then uh, we go to Lotus. I have, uh, I have this here. You know, uh, this was listed on uh, Amazon. I just wanted to show you this. It's 2,293 rupees for a packet, which is 30 grams. So this is just, this, this is mind boggling, this figure for me. Um, it's been marketed Egyptian blue lotus flower, something very rare and all. It's, it's basically, um, you know, it's, it's marketing. Uh, just see the cost. It might be very rare, but just it's 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 mind-boggling the sum of money that people and it's being listed and I I have seen reviews of it and uh, people buy this stuff. So um, um, who knows? We come up with something like this uh, again. Uh, there are there are products made out of lotus. Uh, there's jam. Um, there's syrups. There's uh, used in curries. So uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with a lotus flower. Of course, then the maknas, you know, they've uh, the lotus seeds, they've burst upon uh, as a very healthier alternative to other uh, snack foods. And you have uh, different companies doing a lot of different uh, flavorings with maknas, coatings with maknas. So uh, that is always there. It's still, it's, it's, it's uh, a flower-related product, the seed. So um, that, that's, that's lotus for you. Hibascus. Of course, uh, traditionally, our grandmothers used to do uh, a lot with hibascus. Uh, a lot of products are available on the net in health stores, uh, functional foods, um, then, uh, you know, decoctions, herbal teas, uh, so many things. And um, if you look at these prices, I keep looking at new products whenever I go into a supermarket or a health food store. And I do find there's a lot of money to be made. If you have a product which is uh, good, if you can standardize it, if you can be consistent in its quality, is attractively packed and marketed at the right, uh, at the right kind of uh, a customer. Uh, this, these are never going to be uh, stocked in bulk by supermarkets like your teas, uh, like your normal CTC and your, your, the mainstream teas. But they will definitely have 
uh, a place in health food, they will definitely have a place on on in online retail. Uh, it's uh, something you know. It's it's a niche market. It's not. It's never going to be a big volume. Uh, you know, product. It's always going to be a niche market, a small market. But saying that, it's going to be a very um, a lucrative market. I feel. And uh, very promising, very promising. Uh, so you can see these products and uh, everybody knows you know, that this is good for health. Uh, there is research that has just confirmed it, but it is good for health. People know that. I mean, knowing that for hundreds and maybe thousands of years. <coughs> Another flower, which is very popular in many areas of India, is the pumpkin flower. A lot of it can be done. And uh, not only in India, but in um, uh, many of the Spanish-speaking countries in South America uh, and in Spain and in Latin America, pumpkin blossoms are a very, very well-known and a very loved ingredient for a lot of foods. In India, we have dry curries, we have pakoras, we have stir fries made from pumpkin uh, flowers. Uh, you get them canned. I don't think anybody is doing bottled and canned pumpkin flowers in India. So there is an opportunity to do that. They would not freeze well. Um, uh, there would be a lot of work needed to, um, you know, try to come out with a frozen pumpkin uh, flower. I'm, I have my doubts on that. But yes, all these, these, these bottled and uh, brine canned and brine. They're all there. It's uh, it's available. You get them. Not in India, uh, but you can buy them abroad. And maybe somebody wants to do something like that in India. Uh, so um, this is an idea that came up and I was sharing it with you. Uh, sesbinia. Um, technically, would people would call it a weed, maybe. Um, but very, very good. Uh, very good ingredient. Very good food. Uh, very nutritious, very cheap in areas where it goes almost wild or semi-wild. Uh, so many things you can do out of it. Um, I have had uh, an omelette uh, with the sesbinia flowers. And I can tell you that it was a very agreeable product, very nice product. I would uh, highly recommend this. It is uh, something which is which has a lot of potential. Everybody knows it's being used in a lot of parts of the world and in India. But still, it's like, you know, it's, it's somewhere in the background. It needs to be brought out. It needs to be more famous. It deserves to be more famous. Uh, there are much uh, worse ingredients than this, which are very famous. And I, I feel it's, it's uh, traditional products like this, which needs to come up and uh, get into the main street. There is... Um, there is a possibility for this. Um, then there are the others, you know, uh, a lot of flowers are edible. If you look at the net, if you look at books, you will see lists and lists and charts of flowers that are edible. But then, you know, when you say edible, then uh, I don't want to uh, talk too much on something that's just a garnish. We will definitely talk, uh, we'll touch on that. Uh, because working for supermarkets, I have had an experience to look at uh, edible flowers being sold in small packs on the supermarket shelves. Uh, but uh, these these are like Clitoria, the Parajita. Uh, last week, both me and Mr. Brahmankar, we were in our uh, campus where we uh, passed out. Um, and uh, um, you know, we had the opportunity for the floriculture department head. Uh, we, we were there in the nursery and the greenhouses and in the gardens and we saw the flowers and uh, the first thing I look at when I walk into anywhere is what can I eat um, I uh, you know I'm, I'm a man like that you know, uh, horticulturist yes at heart but a food man later on and uh, the, uh, the, the the idea is uh, to find something new uh, new products for cooking, eating, processing so this has been around a long time uh, the tea is has a lot of medicinal benefits, but that's not a topic that we want. It's it's a food ingredient. Chamomile is an old and very well-known uh, ingredient, uh, known to be relaxing, calming. Uh, traditional black teas are mixed with chamomile flowers. Uh, 
you can have teas which are made with just with chamomile flowers. Uh, nasturtium is there. Saffron, of course, uh, doesn't need any introduction. It's a flower crop. The most one of the most expensive. Um, the supermarkets, uh, including Tesco, where I used to work, uh, that is the most expensive uh, product, food product that Tesco sells by day. Uh, that is saffron, and that is always kept locked. Uh, most of the stores in the UK. So you you want a saffron, and uh, you need to ask the uh, the staff member in the store, and they will open a, a lock display box, and they'll give you a saffron, a small uh, a small pack, very expensive. Dandelions, rhododendron is uh, grown in the foothills and uh, Himalayas, and uh, a rhododendron is used in northeast India as a food product. So uh, these are not mainstream, like, you know, hardcore ingredients. They, they, they are flowers that you can eat. Like there are so many others, which we'll have a look at later on. So uh, let's look at some of the products that, you know, people are doing out of flowers, edible flowers. So uh, if uh, you have this, I hope everybody, you know, um, you can have this presentation with you. Uh, when you when you are on, on Facebook next, uh, you go to these people and have a look. Uh, these are, this is Lutian farms. They, they, they are based in, in Philippines. Uh, they, they specialize in edible flowers, among other things, and microgreen kits, and microgreen ready to uh, eat microgreen uh, packs. So uh, I found them very interesting in what they do. They actually specialize in uh, edible flowers and uh, fascinating work. Uh, maybe somebody, uh, some of our nurserymen would do something like this. I don't know or I haven't heard of a company that is, um, you know, focused on edible flowers as yet. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. So that if that is true, what I say, that means there is a window open for somebody to do this. Yes, sorry. I request all the participants. I request all the participants to be on the mute. Uh, Shivangi, madam, please mute all the participants on mute. Uh, yes, sir, no. sorry, sorry, sorry. Not an that. issue. Not an issue. Happens, happens, happens all the time. Not an issue. So, uh, what I feel is that there is a window of opportunity, a big window of opportunity. Uh, see, uh, you know, it is never like I said before. This is never going to be a huge you know, mass production, a bulk product, and it's never going to be, you know, in uh, 1,000 kilograms or 5,000 kilograms. It's always going to be small packets. It's going to be small size packets. It's going to be attractively priced, pricey, very expensive packs, looking very beautiful inside out. So that is the kind of products we are talking about. And because I'm talking to nursery men today, uh, just imagine, you know, you have huge nurseries, which thousands and thousands of uh, bags of uh, annuals. Uh, say you, uh, there was a time when you couldn't sell them or somebody had ordered them and they didn't pick it up. And so many of those pansies, walas, and a lot of different things you can eat. I will go to that chart later on. But uh, see where I'm coming from, you know. And you know how you go about doing this is, uh, you take edible flowers that you know can you can eat, which you have, and you go and you, uh, first of all, what you do is, uh, there are people who are ready to pay for things like this. And who are those people? I'll tell you who are those people. Uh, they are chefs uh, from Star Hotels, um, very expensive dishes. Uh, they are always looking for new ingredients. They always want to impress. So when you are going to charge... Uh, uh, you know, you have, um, say, I'll just give you an example. Uh, you have a, a, a Kashmiri style firni, uh, a, a dessert made out of a rice, uh, rice and milk. Now, that firni, to elevate it from a normal firni to something, you know, somebody uh, gets charged 500 rupees a small bowl or a thousand rupees a small bowl, needs something special on it as a garnish or as an end. So here comes in your edible flowers. Um, so huge amount of choice you have of what you can put into your uh, garnish as a, on a dish or an ingredient. Uh, 
Um, of course, you have all these that are picked up. They're all from the net. They're all available online or in stores. The sun-dried rose petals, just sun-dried, nothing else. Uh, you have blue butter pea flowers. I mean, the Aparajita, I think. That is, that's just being dried into, uh, you know, into a format which you can just steep in warm water and drink as a tea. You have a banana flower pickle. A lot of companies in Kerala make it. A lot of Keralaites like it. I don't know if somebody from Kerala is on with us in this webinar. They will tell you, I have tasted it. it tastes lovely. Uh, very nice product. Now, uh, let us look at Mahua flowers. Now, uh, you know, we associate a lot of us who are from that Mahua growing belt, like I said. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Jharkhand, Orissa, uh, parts of AP. Uh, we've always associated Mahua with something that happens, you know, Mahua with forest may tribes ke saath associate karte usko. No, you will be very, very, very surprised. Uh, you have fancy packs of Mahua flowers being sold on the Amazon. And for a lot of money, very expensive. Uh, maybe five times, six times, even more than what they are being uh, sold at uh, in the forest. I'm sure that they, the quality of what is being sold on Amazon, uh, I'll show you these, you know, I'll show you these and I'll, I've sent uh, some others to Shivangi and we'll bring that up later on. But all this, you you Google, you, you Google uh, Mahua flower and, and you put them on Amazon and you get all this. You have them, so many companies selling them. And now this, this guy is very clever. You know, he says organic. Of course, all, all Mahua is usually organic. Uh, nobody sprays anything on it. It's, it's a forestry species. It's a forestry. Uh, nobody does anything. Basically, the only thing that might be done is uh, cattle might be, you know, uh, manure might be getting, they might be getting, the trees might be getting manure from the cattle. I don't think anybody is doing anything on, 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 on a mawa flower on a tree. So that is naturally organic. Uh, but you need to certify it. So, so that's, that's always there before you label it. So um, then there's banana flower uh, powder. There is a mawa flower oil. Uh, we have these fancy looking uh, packs, expensive ones. Do look, look them up. Rose flower tea, chamomile, whole flower buds, tea, tea buds. You just steep it in warm water. You have a decoction. You have a tea. Rose buds looks very pretty. Um, you know, small bottles uh, as a gift set. Uh, something that looks nice. It's, it's very, looks sophisticated to gift. Uh, you sell them in, uh, you sell them on a flight, uh, perhaps uh, in the first class or the business class, where somebody is paying three, four, five times of uh, the price of uh, the economy. So uh, people expect something like this. Or uh, when I'm paying five times, I would be, uh, you know, I would expect it. I would be expecting to be surprised, pleasantly shocked by something exclusive like this. So this is the way you, where you go and uh, you market it. Uh, you go to flight kitchens, uh, you go and meet the chefs, you go to meet chefs in the five-star hotels, perhaps you take them samples. Uh, you know, chefs, uh, uh, because I have interacted with a lot of them, they have big egos, they have big football field size egos. And, um, it, you know, they're very, they want exclusivity. If you tell them, you know, uh, chef, I've come to meet you with something that I have, you know, an ingredient which is not common. Uh, please, chef, kisi ko bolna mat. Main aapke paas aaya hu. Because I've heard that you like to experiment you a little bit, you know, you talk like that. And you will be surprised that, you know, he'll pick it up and, uh, you know, he will ask the, the company to pay for it. He will start uh, experimenting with it. And all because he wants to be exclusive. He's the first chef in India who used this or... And, and he just, he has to present uh, like an airline catering kitchen chef, the, the, the chef has to make presentations to the, the airlines on a regular basis for updating their menus, what they serve in their different class seats. So uh, you come up with these flowers, you are nurserymen, you have access to flowers. Um, I'll show you how to do pilots, small scale drying and 
and the, 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 there is very uh, there are low cost options that you can do and um, who knows maybe in your in your trialing this or you support an msc students project or a, a phd students research on edible flowers and then you use because you paid for his research you've supported him then you use his findings and his research and come up with a small project on on edible flowers who knows uh, look at these products they're beautifully packed beautifully marketed and somebody's come up with a musa flower soup uh, banana flower soup powder uh, I haven't tasted it. Uh, maybe nice uh, functional food. I might uh, you know it might be. Uh, it has a lot of nutrition. It seems so. Um, these are things. Now coming back to mahua. Somehow you know it. I when I talk about edible flowers, there's something that has been always wrong. So uh, you have this uh, presentation. If you go, uh, this National Oil Seeds and Vegetable Oils Development Board is there. Uh, which does what the NDDB does, and this is this it does for the oil seeds crops. So they have this uh, beautiful document free on the net about biodiesel potential of mawa flowers. And uh, then there's a lot of research done on uh, tissue culture techniques. You have standardized tissue culture techniques. It's all free on the net. Uh, research papers are there. Uh, why I want to talk about uh, mahua to the nursery vendors because, like you know. Seed, say Mawa grow kia, um, you know all the, the problems. There are you are experts. You are better experts at this. Um, the the uh, the difference you will have in the thousand trees that you will have from uh, seedlings. Um, what needs to be done is there are a few companies in India who are doing it. Not many. Uh, they have started grafting Mawa trees. Um, correct me if I am wrong. Uh, it's not something that is widely available. So if it's not widely available and it has a lot of potential, so that's a window for you. So uh, instead of the eight or 10 years uh, period before it starts bearing flowers, uh, you have a, a, a good scion, a good rootstock, a, an experienced uh, uh, person who's grafting it, a good quality graft fourth year onwards, who knows? Uh, maybe uh, you can work out a high density plantation uh, we have, uh, I had one of my seniors and a good friend who was exploring Mahua as a shade crop for his cardamom. Uh, he's a cardamom consultant down, deep down south. So he was exploring Mahua, but the only problem I thought uh, he would have is the slow growing uh, uh, habitat, habit of the tree. So the cardamom, two, three years, it needs shade and the Mahua wouldn't be able to give that shade. But that the idea was like, you know, the cardamom and the mawa both economically important trees. Uh, so grafting is definitely going to be grafted mawa is definitely going to be in demand uh, one day when people realize you know, that they have this been lying around forever and uh, like you know there's so much that can be done. Biodiesel, a lot of food products, oils, um, I'll tell you about it's. It's not food, but you you look at some of the fancy products made out of mawa seed oil, uh, baby massage oils, you know, five six hundred rupees a tiny bottle. Well, the tribals have always been using it that for that purpose for years and years. It's just properly processed, maybe clean, nice clean bottle, beautifully marketed, and you 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 charging what you basically feel that you deserve to be uh, paid for. For the idea and for the for the new product, so uh, that is Mawa. A any questions? I would like uh, to please request uh, uh, Shivangi to bring up the other slide if she can, please, uh, or, or maybe let, let me let me do it. Let me do it. Um, I'll, I'll do it if you want. You do that, please. Uh, if you can uh, uh, go for the uh, the um, you know the pictures I sent. Maybe, uh, yes, I'll do that. For that, yeah. uh, can you stop sharing your slides? Okay, how do I do that? Uh, uh, just click on stop, share. stop yes, sharing. Yes, yeah. I did that. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Parik Sahab, uh, for a very valuable information. I think it's a very uh, nice uh, session we are given on okay. the edible flowers. Right. Thank you very much, sir, once again. Now I request all the participants, those who have any question to our speaker, they can ask their question. They can, you can raise your hand in the chat. So any question from the participants? Yeah, I was, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there was, there were a few pictures I wanted to show, which yeah. might, uh, um, you know, which might stimulate the questions. 
so if um, maybe if it's okay, can I can show them. Yeah, yeah, you can show them. Yeah. See, uh, now when you when you have uh, 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 Shivangi, please, if you can, uh, madam, pull up the pictures. Uh, this is the presentation. The other pictures, you know, the set of pictures that I sent you. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll do it. Uh, that that has that would uh, you know uh, encourage people to come up with questions. Uh, yes, these these yes. Now in 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 UK supermarket shelves, uh, this is a very uh, uh, you you see these products on shelves, small trays, punnets like grape punnets, smaller than grape punnets, and you see them. Uh, you know if you can uh, uh, if you can go through it, please. Uh, the if you can swap the pictures. Uh, yes. Yeah, please. One second. The second one. Yeah. Yeah, see, the, the, these are kind of products like Sainsbury's. Um, Tesco, well, I was working for Tesco. Uh, when I was working for Tesco, um, Tesco was in the process of developing a line of edible flowers. Uh, Sainsbury uh, was there doing that before us. These are kind of very expensive ones. These are garnishes for cakes and chocolates and uh, what have you, uh, salads. So you can go ahead, please. Uh, other other pictures. Yeah, see, this is Saints very back. Just a round assortment of uh, flowers, you know, maybe four pounds, three pounds for a small box. Small box. Please, uh, uh, Mahua, just just look at the price. The reason why I put the screenshot is, uh, look at the price. A hundred gram pack, two hundred and thirty rupees. More flowers. Uh, that is four, five times more expensive than what you buy it, or they must be buying it in the forest. So, um, nicely packed. A lot of companies doing it. Uh, yeah, please, one minute. Uh, I'm not a drunkard. I, I haven't kept that slide to make, uh, you know, people think that I like to drink. I do, but I'm not a drunk. Uh, see, this is how Africa, uh, South Africa markets one of its uh, fruits that has been used to make liqueur. Amarula, some of I, my, some of you might have had it. It's it's a liqueur, and it's made from the amarula fruit, which is a fruit that grows wild in the forests of South Africa. So we have something uh, which is the mawa, which goes wild. It has flowers, and and thousands of years liquor has been made out of it. So if you can go ahead and uh, see somebody is do, started doing it. So when I say flowers, you know, edible flowers, I also mean flowers as a raw material for something as special as a liqueur. Uh, if you go ahead, there's somebody in Goa, a Desmond. Mr. Desmond, he's doing uh, a liqueur, a premium liqueur from uh, Mahua flowers. Uh, please go ahead, Shwangi. Uh, show the other pictures. Again, flowers, small flowers. Go ahead, please. Packs, small packs. Amarula again, if you go ahead. See, this is what I was talking about. Uh, this is DJ Mahua. Uh, this is, look at the price of the bottle. This is a liquor that has been distilled by tribes for thousands of years. Now, this gentleman has refined the distilling process and he's done something to it. He's made a nice bottle and he's, he's selling it. He's charging a lot of money for it. I think people should buy it. People should make it more famous. It's, it's, it's a better spirit than some of the ones that we buy and spend a lot of money for. Uh, please go ahead. Chocolates uh, filled with amarillo liqueur. Very. Uh, this this is another nice product. Uh, these are shortbread patties. Uh, that is uh, for the Punaites. There's something like what Shrewsbury make. A Shrewsbury from um, the the Parsi bakery. I forgot the name. Um, uh, this is what uh, the product is. It's like a Shrewsbury cookie with live fresh flowers pressed before the baking has happened. So you, you can see that slope so beautiful. These are all real flowers, small flowers. And you can charge what you want, basically, if you have a product like this. You serve that in a five-star hotel. You serve that on a, on a first-class flight, an international flight. And, uh, you know, people go, wow. And you can charge what you feel like for that. So if you can go ahead, please. Other pictures. Another micro game. Simple pack. Uh, of, uh, sorry, my, no, I'm not micro beans, of edible flower petals. Um, this, this is there. Nobody's doing it. I don't think anybody, I haven't seen any, anybody doing it. 
किया है सो देर इज अंडो प्लीज गो है अगेन कुकीज दिज ऑल कुकीज डायन आफ्रीकन डेज इज यूर लास्ट ऑल दिस यू कैन ईट यू नो I I'm not sure, you know, if they taste good. Some of them do. Uh, some of them have no taste. It's just the cosmetic value that they add. The look, it looks beautiful. So um, that's it. Basically, if you can pull up the other presentation and then we'll wind up. Waitrose, one of the premium supermarkets, food. They're known for their food. Uh, they have edible flowers on the shelves. Uh, if you can have the other, uh, yes. Now this is what I wanted to show you. Um, these are small dryers, you know, home scale, small scale. which you can start experimenting with with your flowers uh i have uh, heard and i've seen flowers uh, you don't need temperatures in excess of 80 degrees 60 to 80 is where you otherwise you lose color you lose the the structure uh, you lose a lot of things you you use the the, the, the if if you if you are going to dry flowers after drying post drying they should look attractive this is the way to start experimenting on buy a small dehydrator a fruit and vegetable dehydrator that will do the job start if you are a nursery man you have access to violas and pansies and lavender or something like that you start you know you have time you start drying a little bit you take your fresh flowers to a chef you take your semi dried flowers to a chef you take your dried flowers to him you show him let, let's let's work with this i don't mind giving you a, a, a free samples start using it in your dishes as a garnish or something like that uh, there there are a lot of dehydrators available if you go down um, so starting from 4000 to 10000 15000 a little bit up if you want a bigger dryer um, you have this even this a dryer like this is more than enough this would be an industrial scale dryer 28000 it will have like 10 trays or 15 trays and uh, there are not many machines you know that 28000 mein ek you know you start the process in 28000 rupees so i feel that uh, not much investment like but you have to have access to uh, a considerable quantity for this otherwise medium size chalega aapko 10000 5000 8000 ka machine small quantities um, okay we'll take questions uh, okay freeze yeah. right yeah please. mr harris uh, mr harris would like to ask you one question Yes, uh, please. Mr. Harris, please ask your question. Yes, please. Uh, Harris, good, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, look, sir, I'm very glad that finally INA has arranged a seminar on edible flowers. Something Thank that you, I have been waiting for for months, Pleasure. and uh, it was a very enlightening session, of course, uh, for all the nursery people because it's a niche uh, area, like you rightly said. Uh, my question basically uh, is from a farmer's perspective. Yes, from please. a producer perspective as you are also a farmer yourself and have worked in supermarkets and uh, uh, you know industries that are forwardly integrated so yes. i was very keen to understand that which parts of india can uh, most of the edible flowers would thrive in terms of water soil condition climate weather etc right and and uh, of course like this is not a question which can be answered in few sentences probably right. uh, an enthusiast or somebody who is very passionate about edible flowers uh, right. to pursue it as an industry because i i was very keen to produce it and right. uh, probably process it pack right. it and sell it myself if that is possible okay. it or is else, it is it is possible or else would want to sell uh, in its original form to the chefs to the hotels or right. you know supermarkets uh, maybe dried and packed or, or something of that sort so right. uh, so basically i'm not sure whether this is a question but uh, what it I is actually it is it is uh, may 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 i uh, may i try to answer it um, uh, may i know where are you located one more line sir if you don't yes, mind yes please yes please so uh, basically after your uh, answer and after this session gets over yes uh, i was uh, very keen to understand that is there any way to connect with you or or with somebody who can probably guide us uh, to pursue the plantation and production of edible flowers on probably a little larger scale right you can always uh, get in touch with me uh, my uh, contact details are at the front and i can share it to you later on uh, sure. what experience i have i can always share it with you 
if i don't know something i know people who know something so i can point them out to you and uh, so it's yes it's always possible we could we could we could uh, it's uh, it's a mutually exchange of information and i having i having worked with the supermarkets and with an airline catering company i do know uh, what not to do i do know what to do but i more than that i do know i do know what not to do that's all the more important i guess <laughs> so uh, can i uh, go back to your first question Sure. So, uh, can I know where you are located in India? Uh, sir, I am in Mumbai. Okay. And we have ten right. acres farm in Pune, okay. where I am doing poly house poly house farming of ornamental roses, Dutch varieties. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, and uh, we are also doing some open field cultivation of vegetables. Right. But, um, flowers, especially edible flowers that are grown right. in open. or probably in poly houses we right. every uh, like partners are very keen to explore okay um, the the trick uh, you know to get into it is um, you know that never go into never have a product and then start looking at a market for it uh, you know you first identify if there is a market for it how do you do that you go and meet people uh, who you think will be your buyers like your chefs your airline catering chefs uh, your buyers of health food stores uh, there are companies like uh, like you know there's uh, they do small uh, lots godrej has got a supermarket chain a small one uh, i forget the name uh, they are people who will you know give you a place for something uh, like nature's that. nature's basket nature's place. basket i'm i'm i have how good uh, I have good words. I've heard about them. Uh, they're very good with encouraging new products. Uh, I have a friend who has put uh, dried fruit products on them on their shelves, and he had a very good experience. So I would first say, like in Pune, Pune, there's a lot of things you can do in Pune. Uh, Pune has the climate for a lot of the flowers. If you see the flower chart, if you go onto any website, any any edible flowers information, you're going to see a lot of annuals. can be used as uh, food products a lot of seasonal flowers so in seasonal flowers you are basically you know it's it's something that you are going to uh, have for three months in your field for once so uh, yes pune is a uh, winter in pune is good for a lot of uh, european style flowers you have the elevation then uh, pune is not at sea level like we are uh, you have nice cool and very dry winters there's a lot of things you can do there's a lot of things you can do my friend in pune and do it on a small scale like i said you know buy a small dryer start out with experiments little experiments take samples to people show them what you can do or what they need um and that's the way to do it i'm i'm sure there is a window nobody else is doing it i don't think i haven't heard anybody doing it properly or systematically so all the best and you can always talk to you yeah for a more detailed discussion on this topic yes we can we can always we can always parik sir please parik sir please share your sin number and uh, email yes. id in the chat uh, so it will be convenient okay it will be convenient um, for uh, our fine. participants uh, to contact you it's at so, the front of uh, how do i do that um, sir i'll do it for you uh, if, if that's input. the same number if yeah it is the same number Okay, email you'll have to tell me. I'll do yes. it for you. Email is very simple. It is Ruben yeah. Parekh at yeah. Yahoo dot. Okay. Uh, it's Ruben all Ruben. all lower case. It's all one word. Ruben Parekh at Yahoo dot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Number right. I'll I'll number I'll send. Yeah. It's nine one zero six one four eight zero three seven. Yeah, there is one question from uh, Kushbu Madam. Uh, Kushbu yes, Madam, please ask your question. Yeah, good evening, sir. Sorry, this is uh, Jayant, uh, her husband. Okay, no issues. Not issues. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So please it's a husband wife sir. team. Okay, nursery <laughs> man. Fine, great. <laughs> right. Yes, great. yes. Thank, great. thank you, Rubin ji, for uh, this beautiful session. Actually, edible uh, rose, which we are looking for for quite a long time. Uh, so. um sir uh, where uh, can we get the genuine source of this edible rose plants or other uh, plants seeds or plants in india because we were trying to search online but we could not get much of the help genuine uh, uh, source 
this. R- roses, uh, seeds won't be there. There'll be plants. And, uh, you know, the ones that are uh, used for Gulkan, basically. Those yeah. are the variety that you need. Uh, you don't need to do anything exotic. Uh, you go to where the Gulkand is made and those are the basic varieties that, uh, you know, naturalized varieties of India. I don't think you need to bring anything from abroad uh, and do it. It will be very expensive. Uh, but the, the, the basically the edible rose, if you're talking about rose, the ones that are used for Gulkand would be good enough for uh, drying and used as uh, an ingredient. Basically, uh, what we can call is deshi gulab, scented deshi. gulab. So, any desi gulab is edible? Yes, technically, yes. Okay. But okay. some have got more fragrance, and those are the ones that people will prefer, obviously. Uh, Rubin, sir, this is Kushbu. Thank you so very much for such a lovely session. It's very, My very goodness. informative, and uh, you took a lot of time and efforts to let us know the plant's name. I have the second question, sir. Uh, hibiscus, when you told me, yes. hibiscus in, like, uh, the uh, nursery people have grown hibiscus. It's a very common plant, but is yes. all, are all hibiscus plants are edible or like these hybrid ones, these double layered, single layered? I, all I, are... No, no. I, I don't think so. They, they are edible. I haven't heard of any undesirable compounds in hibiscus. But uh, when you say hibiscus, it's usually the dark red single varieties that okay. are used. Noted. Noted. Okay. Uh, that is the one that is a traditionally uh, the hibiscus that is used. Okay. The normal dark red one, the single, not the double. Uh, it's not the Hawaiian uh, varieties of hibiscus. It's the normal mm. hibiscus. Jo, okay. uh, Jasu, jo Ganpati ji ko chadate hai. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That is the one that gives the best results on dry. I understand. Bye. And uh, the last question is, sesbina flowers are like very, very informative to know. These yes. are the wide variety of the flowers and very, very nutritional in value. So uh, we should really bring it to people. Now, yes, who, are sure. the, who are the sources? Like, would you be able to let us uh, know who is growing it? Or Sesbina, Sesbina is almost like a, a weed crop. And it grows in very poor soils and it grows wild in so many places of India. It is used even as a green manure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yes, they, they cut sesbinia and put it in the soil again, compost it. So sesbinia, you get seeds in a lot of uh, uh, farm input shops all around. If you are uh, in, in any part in rural India, I'm sure you can. If you can't, you can get it online. Uh, Amazon sells sesbinia seeds, I think. So okay. does some of the other agriculture retailers. And uh, Sespinia, yes, you should. You are very right. It is a vast untapped food source. And, mm-hmm. and these are, you know, what has happened in <laughs> our, our development as, um, as uh, a, a nation is, we have, uh, you know, we have forgotten so many things that have always been around as a source of food. Sespinia has been around for a long, long time. And not only the white, madam, but the pink and the red also is edible. And they look beautiful. The pinks and the reds, says Vinyas. And the white. All three are edible. Thank you so much, Rubin, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kushubu, madam. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sachin, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one, there is one participant with us, Mr. Ajay Devure. Okay. Uh, Devure, sir. Devure, sir. Please ask me. Namaskar, question. Ajay, bhai. He is my senior. And I've learned a lot about from him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Devre sir. But I yes. Mr. Devre sir. Ajay Devre ji, up, you are raising your hand. Please ask your question. Hello. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Devre sir, how are you? Yeah, fine. Every, everything is fine. Uh, yeah. It's very interesting to listen, listen to and even uh, uh, pleasing to eyes too. So uh, I really yeah. enjoyed the presentation. Thank so, you. I have only one, uh, means I just want to have information on what are the compliances uh, one need to have if you want to start the production, particularly in edible oils uh, sector. So what are the compliances, the basic compliances we need to stick to? Edible oil, you said, Ajay Bhai? Sorry, edible flowers. Flowers. Hmm. There is nothing as, as a guideline from the government as of now, because nobody's done it. Okay. Uh, I have searched far and wide. 
एडिबल फ्लावर्स के लिए कुछ सेपरेट एफ एस एस आई में नहीं है अभी तक एंड बेसिकली इट वुड इट वुड बी सिमिलर टू समथिंग लाइक वेजिटेबल दैट इज कंज्यूम्ड और फूड कंज्यूम्ड फ्रेश विच इज लाइक यू नो एक जो एक भाजी के ऊपर या एक हर्ब्स के ऊपर जो सब लेजिस्लेशन आएगा वही इसके ऊपर भी होना चाहिए क्योंकि दे द सेम वे दे विल बी कंज्यूम सो स्पेसिफिकली इवन अब्रॉड आई टेल यू देवरे साहब अब्रॉड ऑल्सो दीज लेजिस्लेशन फॉर एडिबल फ्लावर्स हैव कम वेरी रिसेंट ओके दे आर नॉट ओल्ड लेजिस्लेशन बिकॉज इट वॉज नॉट समथिंग दैट यू नो वॉज सो वाइड स्प्रेड इन यूज uh yes one one thing i would i would say is you know when when you are talking about edible flowers uh you know they it, they are not going to be able to bear a heavy wash right like a vegetable would uh so if you are spraying something on it mm-hmm. uh, you have to be very careful you know you you send a sample to somewhere and then uh, they do a they run a pesticide analysis on it and, and they find a lot of chemicals uh, that is going to be a trouble uh with certain vegetables and uh, salad crops herbs you can wash them properly a flower's integrity would uh, be damaged if you start washing it like mm-hmm. if we talk about uh, roots particularly yes. and yes. Uh, sort of uh, organic certification yes uh, then in that case uh, i think we should stick to the most of the compliances uh, related to organic right i i i would feel so i would feel that would be appropriate for roses okay, okay. okay okay thanks thanks rubin uh, we My expect uh, we will be connected to you in uh, future uh, thank you so much programs too so right, i right. request i change it to have a means uh, we really would like to listen to such uh, speakers so thank thanks you. thanks sure. a lot once again sure, to everyone sure, sure. okay sure sure we will do take care of this thing sure. okay thank you so there, thank there you. is one question from mr yogeshwar yogeshwar bidwai sir please ask your question yogeshwar bidwai Yeah, uh, thanks, Rubin sir. It was very enlightening session. My pleasure, Bidwai sir. My question is sir uh, regarding the uh, different kind of uh, tea. Yes. Tea which are basically made from the different flowers. So, is there any right. source of information where we can get the collective or complete uh, information regarding different teas which are uh, healthy for our uh, like healthy healthy kind of tea? Like, there's there's a lot of work that's already done and available. It's all on the net. most of it is free uh, there are a lot of research articles if you are uh, uh, you know subscribe to some of the research papers uh, so much is there on uh, the health benefits of teas uh, but i can tell you something that the the, the people who are doing that who are mm-hmm. making say, i'll give an example uh, in india the the people who are doing the uh, the chamomile tea uh, or the rose tea most of it that is self learned by trial and error because there is it's like if you ask me you know you want to produce a frozen samosa there is a there is a full package of practices that i can give you from different filling recipes to different doughs uh, how to make the folds everything is there for flower teas uh, that doesn't exist so much off the shelf information because the companies who are doing it they are small companies uh they have mostly self taught and uh, there is no large commercial company into it so it will be a little bit of buying samples buying what is already available looking at it buying a small equipment in the beginning trying to dry yourself uh, another thing is see if you see if you are a rose grower already you are into uh, into uh, scented roses you have don't start going around and buying a dryer um where i am located in walsar there are four or five small fruit and vegetable dehydrating um i wouldn't call them companies operators around me who are doing things like turmeric who are doing uh, onions garlic who are doing drumstick powder unke paas leke jaiye pehle you don't have to tell them what you are doing you just want to tell them that you have this 25 kg of uh, of rose buds or rose petals they should go sent it once and i want to uh, get them dry in such a way that the color is retained and uh, you know the 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 aroma is not lost so you give them small samples too don't want to buy a machine don't buy try to get it done outside 
but there is no like you know if i if you tell me that uh, i want an off the shelf uh, book which will teach me how to do hibascus teas i'm sorry but i'm not aware of something like that is available it will be a little bit of a trial and error uh, process thank you sir thanks thank you i will take the last question of this uh, today's webinar that is from mr naresh makwana naresh makwana ji please ask your question hello yes mr makwana ha namaste sir namaste uh, jo marigold flowers hai yes ha wo uh, edible flower उसमें आते हैं कि उसका yes. जो पाउडर बना के फूड कलर्स में यूज होता है यस सर एज अ रिप्लेसमेंट टू अ चीपर रिप्रेजेंट टू सैफ्रिन यू कैन यू कैन यूज इट एज एन एन अल्टरनेटिव चीपर अल्टरनेटिव टू सैफ्रिन यस दे आर रेडी अच्छा थैंक यू नरेश सर यू गॉट योर आंसर ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन यस यस ओके यस थैंक यू I request uh, all the participants to be on the mute. Sir, oh, and very informative session and. Uh, sir, uh, yeah. sir, before we end this session, I just have a little uh, thing to say. This is in relation to a lot of questions that has been asked. I was just curious if if there is a market for vegan meat in India. so is there an increased opportunity for edible flowers and its production and propagation i i would feel there is uh, recently you know so I, because I... Uh, recently a giant company like itc they have just recently they have just announced so i think it will take couple of years to progress that they are going to uh, start vegan meat production and there is i think one mumbai based company also a small venture which has started this Called Imagine Foods. So, will it increase the opportunity for edible flowers production? Definitely, definitely. Uh, like I said, you know, you the banana, the banana blossom is already recognized as something which is similar to a fish, uh, flesh, flesh meat. Um, the texture, the look, the the feel, and uh, the nutritionally wise. Uh, there's somebody who's doing a jackfruit meat burger. Uh, sorry, a meat. I would say a burger which is made out of jackfruit, uh, raw jackfruit. and it tastes it uh, it's it's uh, meant to uh, you know uh, it meat analogs which we call them in the food industry it, it smells it looks and it feels like meat but it's not meat it's vegan uh, there's somebody who's doing a jackfruit burger and uh, marketing as a replacement to a meat burger and he's done a very good job of it it's a goa based company i don't remember the name of hand but i've ordered it and i had it and i would be uh, buying that again because it is so nice there is there is there is a big potential and uh, flowers you know why the window is there because there's nobody yet doing it and uh, there is money for there, there are people you should look at amazon so many flower products are there and just look at the prices so when you see that and uh, you do a little bit of basic math and you can find that there's people lot of ma people making money out of it that there is a small window i'm not sure if it's a big one but it's 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 a small window Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Rubin, sir, for a very fantastic and very informative session. Uh, so, I think uh, today's webinar will uh, open the new avenues for the new entrepreneurships, new startups, and it will be very helpful webinar for the youngsters also and the the persons who are working in this field also. So, I think uh, today's webinar gives a very wide information about the edible flowers, and it will help in uh, the career those who are willing to join this. you entered interacted very nicely and answered the questions of all the participants Thank so you. once again i am very thankful to you for sparing your valuable time with for ina My and pleasure. hopefully we will uh, we require more time from you in the future also my so pleasure thank you very much i want to thank become you. a member for such in bike yeah yeah sure sure no possible so, so thank you very thank much you. sparing for your valuable time and knowledge with us and not last but the least uh, our participants Yeah. So thank you very much for all the participants who have joined so across the thank media, you. especially Shivangi yeah. madam. She has been very helpful, very patient, and uh, at my uh, very below par uh, net skills. So um, thank you so much, and thank, thank you, Mr. Pramankar, uh, for inviting yeah. me, and thank the participants. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.
thank you sir thanks to thank all thanks to our night. team also of ina uh, shivangi madam pinky madam and those who are backing up this uh, event uh, all the webinars so i think this was the 77th webinar given by mr parik sir so thank you once again to all of you and have a nice time have a great time and see you in the next webinar on next thursday by 2 o'clock till then have a nice time to all of you thank you very much good night bye bye thank you good night good night good night thank you